Hello, hi. Hope that everyone is well. So I'm going to do the homework, some homeworks from uh, Section 6.1, and um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm anticipating that, uh, that, that folks are trying some of these, and, and then I'm going to assume that it's like in a classroom situation where somebody said to me, you know, uh, could, you, could you go over question four? So I'm, I'm going to go over a couple of those. So, uh, so I'm starting in question four, and you see on the screen that I've got uh, two sets of formulas, formula for confidence interval and a formula for a hypothesis test. In both cases, you see this square root construct and the square root construct, and that's what question six four is about. Okay, so let's start in here. I'm going to pull up my paper. Come on, window go away. There we go. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so I'll pull up my paper, and the paper says... Uh, 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 random samples of given size are drawn from a population of given from the standard error of the distribution of sample proportions. So what's happening here in question 6-4? So you want to find uh, the, the, uh, the uh, sample distribution. And you want to find its spreadedness. So of course when we take samples, just like when we took the papers out of the paper bag, we found that they were clustered around some value and that they had some spreadedness. That's the number we want to calculate here. And the, the formula for calculating that is going to be square root of p times 1 minus p all the way over n. And that formula, you'll remember there's a page in the book, oh what the heck number is it? Page 478. There's a page in the book that contains all the formulas in one place, so mark that page. All right, and then the, 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 it's just a question of plugging in the numbers. So on question four, they told me that P is 0.27 and that N is a 30. So I'm just going to put the square root of 0 0.27 times 0. What is it? 73 over 30. And we'll see what my calculator makes of that. So let's see. 0.27 times 0.73 equals, divided by 30 equals, take the square root, equals, and I get the 0.081. So about 0 0.081. Okay, so we can calculate the spreadedness of the sampling distribution, and of course we've used that any number of times here to, for, uh, for doing either confidence intervals or hypothesis tests. Okay, next one up is then 6.14. I've got to find that page. Oops, went too far. There we go. The, the question says, um, uh, use the normal distribution to find the confidence interval for proportion P, given the relevant sample results, give the best point estimate for P, and all that kind of stuff. So I am, um, uh, I am doing number 14, and I want a 95% confidence interval, 6.14. I want a 95% confidence interval. I have a P hat of, uh, who can remember, 0 0.23. I have an N of 400. Okay. Okay, and I'm simply applying the formula. P hat plus and minus the star times the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. Oh darn this sunlight coming through the window. Okay, so I'm simply looking at 0 0.23 plus and minus. Do you remember what z star to use for a 95% confidence interval? It's 1.960 square root of 0 0.23, 0 0.77, multiply them together, all over 400. So I think you, you see what I mean here. I, I think this is a good illustration. You see what I mean when I say that the, the hard part was chapter 3 and 4. Uh, you know, this is, I don't want to make somebody feel bad who is struggling with this, but this is a place to reinforce your understanding from chapter 3 and 4. This is not a place where we're learning new stuff. We're, we're reinforcing the understanding that we've already learned. Okay, okay so uh, anyway, back to the calculator. i got to take uh, 0 0.23, 0 0.23 times 0.77 equals, divide it by 400, equals, take the square root, equals, and I got 0 0.021. So this is 0 0.23 plus and minus 
1.960 times 0 0.021. Okay, I, I'm just, I'm not going to worry about these decimal places out here. So I'm going to take 1.960 times 0 0.021 equals, that's 0 0.04, so I'm looking at uh, 0 0.23 plus and minus 0 0.04. I've got a margin of error of a margin of error of 4%. So the standard error was 2%. The margin of error is 4%. So 23 plus 4 makes 27. And 23 minus 4 makes 19. Okay, and again, the important part here, folks don't have trouble with it. Folks don't have trouble with, with the calculating the interval. That's not the hard part. The important part here is what's in that interval what's in there and the, and the answer is we think the population proportion p is in there this is a calculation that uses p hat to find where does p lie because we don't care about the sample we care about the population okay okay so that was 14 what's next is uh number 16 N number 16 says what sample size so oops didn't really have enough room there so 4.16 Oops, I'm sorry, uh, it's 6.16. 6.16. So sample size. So on the facing page in the book here is the, is the formula for sample size. I'll write it down. N equals, and it goes Z star over the margin of error, quantity squared, and then you multiply by P hat and 1 minus p hat. If you don't have a p hat, use p hat equals 0.5. But if you have a p hat, then use that. Okay, okay. so a p hat of, of 0.5 is sort of the safest case. But if you have a p hat, then you can save yourself a lot of trouble if you use that. Okay, and number 16 says, um, well, the directions say what sample size is needed to give the desired margin of error. And number 16 says a margin of error of 1% with 99 confidence. So we want a margin of error of 0 0.01. Don't write 1. Write 0 0.01 because that's the calculation you want. In calculation, you always want to use the decimal version. Okay. And, of course, for a 99% confidence interval, you want a Z star of, of 2.576. They didn't give me a P hat, so I'm going to use a P hat of 0 0.5. So these three... Whoops, so cross that out there. These three go in that formula, and it's just a calculator job. A person can, of course, flub up the calculator, but it isn't actually hard. Let's see if I flub up the calculator. Let's see how I do. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take here um, 0.5 times 0.5 equals, that's this part over here, so that's 0.25. Okay, 2.576, 2.576, divided by 0 0.01, that's this stuff over here, equals, and then square it. Oh, there we go, equals. And I've got here 66,357.76, so strictly speaking, I can't have 0 0.76 of a person, so strictly speaking, I should round up. So I get 66,000. 358. But don't forget, I have to multiply by 0.25. And I end up with 16,589.44. And again, I have to round up because I can't have a 0.44 of a person. So I'm looking at uh, 16,590. Okay, for N. Okay, so th this has a square in it be precisely because the formula for the standard error has a, has a square root in it. When you do the algebra, you end up with a square on the other side of the equation. But in any event, it's just a formula. Just plug it in. If you like, copy this formula here to that page that you've bookmarked so that everything is all on the same page. Okay, okay that's 6.16. And now I want to do 6.21, which is going to ask me for a confidence interval. Make some... Make some room here. So 6.21. Okay. 
6.21 says, uh, what percentage of U.S. adults say they never exercise? A survey of 1,000 U.S. adults, 25% say they never exercise. Find and interpret a 99% confidence for the proportion of U.S. adults who, who never exercise. So we've got a sample, uh, n equals 1,000, and we're reporting a p-hat of, is it 0.25? No, 20, 0.20. And we want a 99% uh, confidence interval. Whoops, 99%. And again, this is a good example: is that this is that this section is reinforcing Chapter Three. It's not anything new. We're reinforcing the ideas we already had, just simply dropping them into a formula and understanding perfectly what's happening because we worked so hard in Chapter Two, Chapter Three. Excuse me. Okay, so I'm looking at p hat plus and minus z star, square root of p hat, 1 minus p hat, over n, in my terrible handwriting. Drop it in, 0 0.20, plus and minus. Do you remember the z star for 99% confidence interval? You should write it on that page. It's 2.576, take the square root of 0.20, 0 0.80 all over 1,000. Pull out your calculator and see how you do. 0 0.2 times 0 0.8 equals, divided by 1,000, equals, take the square root, and when all the smoke clears, I got 0012. So this is 0 0.20 plus and minus 2.576 times 0 0.012. 0.010, oh, I guess it's 3 when I actually round it because it's, it's 126. Okay? Multiply that by 2.576, so 0 0.013 times 2.576 gives me 0 0.033. So it's 0 0.20 plus and minus 0 0.03. And that's the answer. So 0.23 down to 0.17. And again, the point of the confidence interval, the idea of the confidence, what's the confidence interval about, is that we know the sample number. Where is it? Here it is. We know the sample number. We want this, we want to know the true number. We want to know if you took a census, what would the answer be? And we think it's close to 0 0.20. How close? This close. How sure are we? This sure. So what lies in here? Not p hat, but p. Okay, so reinforcing the chapter three ideas, nothing new. New formula, but nobody ever says to me, this formula is too hard for me. <laughs> that doesn't give intelligent people trouble. Okay, that was 21. Next, I want to skip forward to the hypothesis test section and do a couple of those. And uh, I'm looking here at uh, question 50. Question 50 says, Determine whether it's appropriate to use a normal distribution. I'm just going to use the normal distribution. And then it says, uh, uh, use the given sample results to test the given hypothesis, and uh, use alpha equals 05. So 6.50, I better write it upside down. Running out of paper here in the, in, in the, uh, in the quarantine. So 6.15, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6.50, 6
you persuade other people by saying, assume you're right, and showing them that it leads to some conclusion that's, that, that's not, not very likely. So you assume they're right, and you try to show. Okay, then the sampling distribution, distribution of samples is this. So we always get a bell curve because the central limit theorem tells us it's a bell curve. It's going to be centered around the true number, which H0 thinks is 0.75, and it's going to have a certain spreadiness for which we use our formula. Okay. What's the formula? It involves the square root of the first percentage, then 1 minus that percentage over n. Now H0 thinks the percentage is 0.75, so I'm going to use 0 0.75, 0 0.25, that's 1 minus 0.75, over, oh, what is n? Oh, there it is, one, 120. My calculator will tell me what that is. 0.75 times 0.25. Oh, oh, no, no, did it wrong. 0.75, 5. I'm telling there we go. Times 0.25 equals, divided by 120 equals, my calculator's sticking, I hope I didn't spill something in it. Take the square root, equals, and the whole thing is 039, 0 0.0, oh, no, 0 0.040, 0 0.040, 0 0.040. Read that right? Yeah, I think I read that right. Okay, 0 0.040. So to get from assume H0 to this picture is mathematics. This, this is not anything that we had to sample. To get from assume H0 to get from P equals this over to this is straightforward mathematics. I mean, maybe straightforward is not the right word, but it, there's, no, uh, there's no sampling involved. Then, uh, so consider our sample, p hat, which uh, is 0 0.69. Is our sample so far off from what H0 thinks that H0 will say, it really, it's that unlikely. Oh, okay, I guess I was mistaken. So we have to draw in to this picture. It's supposed to be the same picture. I'm not so good at pictures. These two are supposed to be the same picture. I draw in the 0 0.69, and I shade its area, but, 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 this says unequal, so I shade not just the part that is on the lower end, I got to shade the part that's in the upper end. 0 0.69 is 0 0.06 from the middle, the middle, so I got to shade 0 0.06 above, so 0 0.06 above 0 0.75 would be 0 0.81, so you shade both and you ask for the total, total p-value. I spelled total with a t. Okay, now that's a question for stat key, but let me figure out what is the, what is the difference. So of course I'm looking at the uh, z equals 0 0.69 minus 0 0.75 over 0 0.040, 0 0.040. Let's see what my calculator makes of that. 0.69, take away 0.75 equals, divided by 0 0.040 equals, minus 1.5. And now we know, because we have a lot of experience with this, that 1.5 standard deviation units away from the middle is not really a lot. So we know, after when I, when I resort to Stacky, we know what Stacky is going to tell us. Stacky is going to tell us that this total p-value is not very small at all. In fact, it's perfectly everyday. And so H0 is going to say, this is a perfectly everyday sample in the context that I think is correct. And so your sample fails to convince me to change my mind. But anyway, let me punch out the Stacky just so that a person feels like, you know, they saw, they saw the actual numbers. Let's see if I can, uh, if I can figure out what I'm, what I'm doing. Ah, there we go. There's Stacky, and i got to take away the... Got to take away the video capture. Which video capture? Oh, what do you know? <laughs> Worked the first time. Okay, so I'm asking a normal distribution. Oh, I got a uh, too much. Too, 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 too. There we go. Too much clicking. There we go. Normal distribution. What was I at? A minus 1.5, but I'm two tailed. Because remember, I shaded two tails. And I could click in there a 1.5 or click in there minus 1.5. Either one is fine, I think. So I'm going to click in there minus 1.5. Minus 1.5. Nope, stop. Minus 
I think I typed it right. Easy to easy hit the wrong button. And that tells me that the area to the left is 0.67. The area to the right is 0.67. So the total area is what? Point, uh, uh, 1.3 is 0 0.134. 0.134, so the p-value, the total p-value is 0.134, which is, of course, just the opposite of this middle part. So the total p-value is 0.134, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that 0.134 is not going to change anybody's mind. So uh, let, me, let me unclick these buttons here. Whoops, no, unclick the wrong button. There we go. Ah, there we go. Okay, so the p-value is 0.134. That key told me the p-value is 0.134. That does not meet the 05 criteria. It does not meet the 05 criteria. So you fail to reject. Okay, fail to reject. So once again, emphasizing here that this is stuff from Chapter 4. This is The concepts here are Chapter 4. I know there's formulas, but the formulas never give anybody any trouble. The, the, what gives people trouble is the concepts, because the concepts are hard. But, but, but wait a minute, we've done these concepts already. We have a pretty good grasp of the concept, and we're reinforcing a little bit, revisiting, which is always a good thing. But so what's, what's happening is we simply say, assume H0. That gives us a distribution of samples. We're doing calculations now instead of bootstrap but it, it doesn't matter to distribution of samples. We do the same logic that we did in chapter 4 and we come to a p-value that is bigger than the alpha, so we fail to reject. Okay. So uh, I think, I hope, that a person who might be feeling like, um, uh, what, what the heck happened in chapter 4 might be starting to say, oh yeah, you know, you always do kind of thing. Okay, one more question I wanted to do. I know this is a long one, but I wanted to do two different hypothesis tests just because hypothesis tests give people trouble. Okay, and I'm going to do number 54. It says, do you believe in ghosts? Telephone survey of 1,000 randomly selected U.S. adults found that 31% of them say they believe in ghosts. Does this provide evidence that more than one in four U.S. adults believe in ghosts? Okay, so, so number 54, and if you, have, if you have the book, you might want to have it open in front of you, 6.54. You might want to have it open in front of you so you can read it and you don't have to rely on my reading. All right, so I'm thinking here that uh, N is 1,000, that uh, P hat is 0 0.3333, no, 31, 0 0.31. And uh, we're interested in the following hypotheses, H0. H A. Okay. H naught and H A. Oh, these always work the same way. Because we're doing a proportion, we're going to write the same letter in both places, and we're never going to write B at. We're always going to write the population number, never the sample number. So this must be a P and this must be a P. This line always has an equal, always has an equal. And what goes over here is the number we're arguing about. So, of course, it depends on the question. So, the question says, does this provide evidence that more than one in four? So, I think we're arguing about the number one quarter. And specifically, we're arguing about greater than one quarter. Okay. Is 0.31 so much bigger than one quarter that the H0 people will say, you know, you've convinced me. The H0 people think the answer is a quarter. 0 0.31 is bigger. Is it so much bigger that the H0 people will change their mind? Oh. So again, chapter four. So always start with what two words? <laughs> Assume H0. Then the distribution of samples. Always looks like a bell curve. Always, always, always. It's always centered at what H0 thinks is the true number because that's we assumed H0. They think that the center, they think the true number is 0 0.25. And it's always got some spreadedness. To calculate the spreadedness in this particular section, we're using P hat. Oops, forgive me. I, 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 I was mistaken. To calculate the spreadedness, we use we, we assumed H0. So H0 thinks that the, that the number is 0.25, so 0.25. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. 0.75. And n is a thousand. What does my calculator think? Whoops! Come on, 
come to Papa. There we go. 0 0.25 times 0.75 equals, divided by 1,000 equals, take the square root, and my calculator says that that's 0 0.014 when I round up with the 6. So 0 0.014, so about 0 0.014, about 1.5%. Now consider our sample. So our sample was 0.31. It's supposed to be the same picture. 0.31, and we want to know what's the p-value. Is 0.31 a perfectly everyday sample in this context? Or is 0.31 a quite unlikely one, so unlikely that the h naught people will say, really? I guess what I'm thinking can't be right. Okay. So we have to calculate how far that is. So z equals 0 0.31 minus 0 0.25 over what number? Oh, 0 0.014. 0 0.014. And I don't know, of course, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so point. 31, take away 0.25 equals, divided by 0.014 equals, so I've got to 4.29, it's about 4.29, 4 and now we know from our past experience working with these things that 4.29 standard deviation units is pretty way far out there. So we know from our past experience that we are going to reject reject H0, that H0 is going to say, really, it's, that, that, it's a crazy way off sample, I guess I must be mistaken. But I'm going to, of course, look up 4.29 on StatKey. So, let's see if I can manipulate the various systems here to get them to do what I want them to do. Uh, StatKey, oh, very good, StatKey. Okay, turn off the video, turn off, the, oh, what do you know, work twice. Okay, and what, what the heck was it, 4.29, but it's not a, it's not a two-tailed, it's, it's a right tail. So, right tail, and 4.29, 4.29, Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> Look, it's practically zero. It's essentially zero. Okay, so back to the piece of paper. P-value essentially zero. So it doesn't matter what alpha is. <laughs> it's p value. So tiny, tiny, tiny. How many O's? Uh, five O's and an 89. So p value is essentially zero. Because the p value is so small, H naught will change their mind. And so that is to say, we reject H naught. Okay. Okay, very good. So again, um, the important part in this chapter, it seems to me, is that we are we are revisiting chapter three and chapter four. Which this is not fresh stuff. We're revisiting chapter three and chapter four. We're applying the ideas that we worked so hard to learn in chapter three and chapter four in context where there's the variety of formulas, and sometimes the formulas have little twists, and a person can 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 flub up something or another. But it isn't actually hard. All the formulas are on that one page. Use it. You know, have that page bookmarked, and you can keep referring to it. All right, very good. Once again, hope everybody is doing well, and uh, and and so uh, have you know have a good day. Okay, bye bye.